I thought it was pretty good. Hey there, folks. Before we get started, let me just say that um, this is going to be a spoiler review. I do not intend on doing a spoiler-free review simply because I just don't have the time to do it right now. I've been juggling a lot of things lately, so I apologize for that. So this is a spoiler warning. Moving forward, so there we go. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I really enjoyed this movie, or at least I said I liked it, I don't remember. But I enjoyed this movie, I thought it was pretty good. But I can tell you with 100% certainty, if I was excited for the, if I was as excited for this movie as I was 2018 or Kills, then I probably wouldn't have liked it, because Michael's barely in it. And this overall timeline just doesn't really appeal to me. I think it was done better previously. I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but I am an H2O fan. I do prefer that movie over most of this trilogy because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And I will be doing a video on why this timeline doesn't make sense to me in a separate video. I will be doing that in a couple of days. However, let's stay focused on this movie for now and those other timeline issues and other issues I have with the overarching narrative, I will explain. But for this movie by itself, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Corey even though he should have been introduced in a different movie or left out completely, depending on how you look at it. For what this is, I enjoyed it. I liked the gentleman who played Corey. I thought he did a good job. I believed him. I believed his um, anguish and his pain. And I believed his struggles. I thought it was overall very well done. And I think that the way that they, um, they did the accident, the horrific accident, I think the way that they pulled it off, it was pretty believable. I think for the most part, it worked out pretty well. Um, maybe they could have done something differently. I'm not sure. But for what they did decide to do with him kicking the door and then Jeremy falling off the stair, uh, the stairwell, I think it was pretty believable. I think it worked out nicely. I think that that's something that could happen. You have a little asshole rich kid. He locks the babysitter in a closet or in this case, the attic. And he's trying to break down the door. The kid is an idiot. So he's standing in front of the door. The kid's an idiot for doing it anyway. I think it's believable. So that didn't take me out of the movie. I don't know if that's something that's bothered anybody else. I'm not entirely sure. But that was believable to me. I liked Corey. I liked where we started with the character. I also liked the intro because it kind of gave me some Halloween 3 vibes. Um, in terms of the, the font and the lettering. So I liked that. I will tell you that the first time watching the video, or the first time watching the movie, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the music. But after watching it the second time, I started to notice a lot more of the nuanced music and a lot of the other subtleties in the uh, in the score. And it felt more like a movie score than it did a horror movie score, if that makes any sense. There was a lot more character music and things like that, different situational music than just your, your run-of-the-mill Halloween music. So I did like that. The set design and the sound design was pretty superb in this movie. Everything looked great. Everything... It just worked. It worked well for me. The sounds of Michael walking, the sounds of the flesh at the beginning of the uh, pumpkin intro, the sounds of um, the knitting needle, everything that final act really f uh, felt good. All the kills sounded great, looked great. Everything looked superb. These one That's one thing you can say about these movies is that these new three movies that they look and sound incredible. Whether it's the music, the sound design, the set design, the cinematography, they look great. Now, they might not be what I want from a Michael Myers movie in terms of how Michael is handled in frame and with the lighting. It's not quite 1978, but in terms of just appreciating it for a good movie, it was really well done, and all three of these movies look fantastic. That's something you cannot take away from them. They look, sound, and feel great. So, I do stand by that. It's the overall narrative that doesn't quite work as well, in my opinion. But in this movie, I think the story was pretty believable. I think it worked. I think they did a good job with it. Now, my... My, um... My interpretation of what's happened to Michael is maybe because I have seen somebody on a Facebook group post you know that it doesn't make any sense for Michael not to have killed for 40 years and be fine and then for this four years him not to kill and start to weaken now I don't know if that's entirely true because we don't know if Michael hasn't killed for four years because there's people missing and things like this and that Michael probably has killed 
um, in that period of time. And it's probably the way that I looked at it, unless I am projecting, which I don't think there's an issue with that because you have your own interpretation of things. I think that the, the what they were trying to go for is that maybe it's Michael's human side that's weakening. He still has that evil force driving him, but Michael's humanity is what's weakening. His body has sustained too much damage. Now, if you look at it the way that that gentleman posted on the Facebook group, just using that as an example, for that 40 years, he didn't really sustain any damage. Yes, he aged 40 years, but he didn't sustain any physical damage. He had the damage that he sustained on 1978, Halloween, but after that, nothing. And then over the events of 2018 and kills, he sustained huge amounts of damage. Gunshots, knives, shotgun blasts, fucking this and that, you name it. Man got hit by a goddamn car. So, a lot happened to Michael in those two movies. So, I think it's believable, or at least the way that I uh, rationalized it in my head, is that Michael has been so badly affected by what's happened to his body. It's more of a human, the human part of him weakening other than just him just like not being able to, I don't know, you know, like that's what I rationalized it is his human side is weakening and his body just can't really function even though he still has that evil force, that force of nature controlling him or being what he is. I don't know, however you look at it. He still has that side to him because you can see it in this movie. It's just his body has gone through so much trauma that he hasn't, he's not what he used to be. That's the way that I look at it. I don't know if that's what they were going for. I don't know if they were kudos to them, but that's the way I see it. It works well for me, so we're going to go with that. I will say, though, that I watched this movie at 3.30 in the morning before I had to go to work, and there was the part where... Corey goes into the sewer to steal the mask and I had I had to have been loud as hell because I was laughing out loud at the scene not because of how funny it was even though it was pretty funny but because when it was happening when Corey went into the sewer Michael was just standing there and then you can see Michael kind of like perk up because he notices Corey come in he like perks up and then Corey immediately attacks him and then Michael like throws Corey all I could think about was uh, Mike and Jay from Wham doing like their Michael and Dr. Loomis parody and when they talk about what Michael's thinking that's all I could think of and that scene where Michael throws Corey all I could think of is them talking and giving Michael that personality that they give him so that was pretty funny if anything that had to have been my favorite moment in the entire movie I don't know why but the way Michael perks up and then throws Corey when Corey tries to attack him. It was just, and then their little struggle, I thought it was great. I loved it. I can understand why you wouldn't because this is, you know, you don't want to mess with Michael like that. And, uh, emasculate him. I can understand that, but it was funny. I don't care. I liked it. Uh, but I don't know. I, 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 it's really hard for me to really kind of go into detail with what I liked about it. I was just, I think it was just the fact that I didn't have so much expectation for this movie and I don't care about this timeline as much as a different one that I was able to just really enjoy it. I didn't mind the fact that Michael wasn't really in the movie. I liked the idea of a copycat killer. I liked the idea of somebody kind of replicating what Michael does, even though it wasn't quite what I expected in terms of Corey kind of doing that. It wasn't like... Um, it wasn't quite what I expected, but I like what they went for. I liked the way Corey moved his, his version of the shape. I liked that. I liked when Michael came back and the altercation with Lori. I was really wondering, as, how is Michael going to die in this? We've seen him get uh, shot to death in Halloween 2 by Rob Zombie and Halloween 4. We've seen him get blown up in three separate films, or caught on fire in three separate films. We've seen him vanish in Halloween 5 and vanish in Halloween Kills. We've seen him just walk away in Halloween 6. We've seen so many different things. So I was really intrigued on how they were going to do this. And I got to say that I was pleasantly surprised, not because of how good I thought it was, not that to say that I thought it was bad, but just how unique it was. I mean, Lori literally pinned him down. She knived up his hands. She just started stabbing him. She pinned him down with the refrigerator. And then they tied his ass to a damn car and throw him, threw him in a fucking... Uh, what do they call it? 
I don't know. I don't know what that's called. I know what it's called, but I can't. It's not coming to me right now. Um, but they fucking crushed his ass. I thought that was great. I did not expect that at all. I did not know how they were going to do it. So I was pleasantly surprised in how they did that. Not that I want to see Michael die or anything, but it was. I was intrigued. How are they going to end their story? And I think they did a pretty damn good job because it was not anything that I uh, that I expected and it was not anything that I heard anybody else say so I think they did a good job with that I think for the story that they were trying to tell I think they did a good job I liked it I liked everybody in this movie in terms of their performance I think they did a good job there was only one part in the movie that I can mention that I thought was kind of cringy it was kind of like kills where it was at the very beginning of the movie when Corey says we're gonna have a good time tonight it's Halloween or something to the effect of that um, or something to that effect. I did not like that line. I thought that was cringy, but overall the dialogue was pretty well done in my opinion. I thought that the writing was pretty good. I liked it. It felt good. I liked the movie. Overall, it had a different feeling than Kills. and had a different feeling than Ends, or 2018. I was pretty pleasantly surprised. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to know what you think, or if you guys want to let me know, what you think about Halloween Ends or any of the other movies in the series or in this specific trilogy, or this specific trilogy. I can't fucking talk ever, I'm sorry. Let me know. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do so. Anything you want to do, go ahead and do it. But just let it be known that I thought this movie was pretty good, and I will stand by that. I thought it was pretty damn good. I've had two watchings of it, and I liked it. I was able to accept the story that they were willing to tell, even though it wasn't my cup of tea. But that being said, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Wait, wait one time, wait one second. Now, I just remembered something. We're leaving this in because, you know, this is how we do it. I left out Allison. I left out in my video, Allison. Now that's because for some reason when I start a video, it takes me probably 15 minutes before I get to the point where I can start the video and not sound like a complete asshole. But <clears throat> I did leave her out and I did look back at my notes and my notes were a little bit more negative. I wanted to leave some of those points out because there's so many people being negative about this movie. I wanted to be one of the people being a little bit more positive. But I will, I, this is not working for me, but I will mention Allison. I thought Allison and Corey's relationship were for the most part pretty believable and I liked her story in this movie. I liked seeing more of Allison because I liked her character in both the previous films. I liked the actress. I think she does a good job. So Allison was pretty good in this movie as well as Hawkins. I liked seeing Hawkins again. I liked seeing the kind of flirting between him and Lori. A lot of the character moments in this movie felt nice with Lindsay and all these moments where it was just seeing them kind of be people, you know? There was a little bit more high tension moments in some of the film as well, but seeing just moments where people are being people it was nice to see. I didn't like that a lot of the townspeople were um, all of a sudden hating on Lori and acting like she had something to do with Michael escaping and saying that she tormented and poked the bear. It doesn't really make any sense because even though she was preparing for Michael for that 40 years, it's not like Michael knew about it. So I don't understand that. But that being said, I just wanted to inject this towards the end to give you a little bit of extra. I liked Allison. I thought all of the supporting characters did a good job as well. And like I said, I wanted this to be overall pretty positive as well as my next couple Halloween reviews or the rest of them, I should say. I don't want to go over into detail on the negatives because I can sit down and watch all of these movies and enjoy them for the most part. Some things will make me mad, some things won't, but they're just movies. At the end of the day, they're just movies. We have things that we like and we have some of the things that we don't. So I enjoyed this movie and hopefully you did as well. With that being said, I'll get the hell out of here, and until next time, true believers.